I bought a green screen and I'm making it literally everybody's problem, so. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, and if you're not, welcome back, okay? I read Britney Spears' memoir. Um, literally, it came out today and it is like 2 a.m. and I, you know, I was like, you know what, I need to talk about this. So, here I am. Before we start the video, go buy the book, okay? This is not like a detailed, detailed description of the book. Um, obviously, go buy it, okay? Go support Britney, okay? We love her, we love her. So, a little note about the book. I actually have the physical book with me. Um, it's one of those books that has the cover that like picks up every little fingerprint. I don't know if you can see the glimmer of my finger grease on the cover of this, but note to Britney girl, as a book lover, I don't really love that, but I did love your book. So let's jump right into it. So Britney starts off her book by giving a kind of like brief family history moment, okay? Britney actually lived in, Louisi lived in Louisiana and went to school in Mississippi, which was like 25 miles away. It was a Christian school. And she talks about how she thinks that the Spears family is basically cursed. And you'll see why here in a second. So Britney's middle name actually comes from her grandma on her dad's side, okay? Emma Jean Spears, but she went by Jean. Jean's husband, June, which is her dad's dad, so her grandpa on her dad's side, was for lack of better words, and Lee. Okay, um, he was abusive towards his children, including Britney's father. He literally sent Jean, his wife, off to a very well-known, um, terrible uh, asylum after she lost her baby because she was, um, I don't know, maybe grieving the loss of her baby. And he basically just sent her away where they put her on lithium. And shortly after she got out of the asylum, she ended her life on the grave of her son about eight years after he died. So, and not to mention that wasn't the only uh, wife that he sent away. So, doesn't this guy just sound like the best? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a theme of um, guys that deserve jail time throughout this entire video. So, <laughs> get ready. Her family was poor, living in a three-bedroom house in um, Louisiana, okay? Three-bedroom ranch house in Louisiana. And then Brian was born, which is her older brother. Her mom went back to school and her dad worked at an oil rig or where'd he work? He was a welder who worked at oil refineries and he was also a heavy drinker, which is something you're gonna wanna remember. He had a tendency, he wasn't a drinker that um, hit his family. He was the drinker that would just go MIA, disappear for a bit, you know? Um, disappear on things like children's first birthdays or Christmas morning and just, where's dad? Oh, we don't know. He's off on a bender. So, he was that kind of drunk, okay? So, Brittany talks about a particularly traumatic day for her. She was about four years old and, um, a neighborhood kid comes running into the house and he's like, come with me, come with me. They go and they find out that her brother, Brian, her older brother, got in a head-on-head -head collision in four-wheelers while they were playing, um, in tall grass, having a blast, being stupid kids, and they got in a head-on-head collision and he ended up in a full body cast. So this is kind of where Brittany starts to get really close with her brother and she's like, you know what? I want to protect him. I don't want him to have any harm to come to him anymore. And I'm just like this, you know, like tight, like booty hole. Okay. With her older brother, Brian, their father at the time is a heavy drinker. Okay. The business isn't doing well. He starts to have like a short ass temper with her and he's rough with her, but he's rougher with Brian. He treats Brian basically exactly how June treated him. So, putting a lot of pressure on him, nothing's ever good enough, making him do insane things for extended, extended periods of time, obviously not healthy, not safe for your kid, okay? So, he's essentially abusive, mostly towards Brian, but Brittany was still kind of scared of him because he wasn't, like, all there. He would, like, talk to himself in the car, so she was, like, worried to be in the car with him. It was frightening, which of course, to any kid that's going to be frightening, I would also be frightened. Throughout this little history tidbit, we also f um, find out about another super traumatic experience that Brittany went through um, when her mom, after having her little sister, had a postpartum hemorrhage and she just like started bleeding crazy and she just remembers the amount of blood coming out of her and freaking out. And after this moment, every time her mom like leaves the room or like isn't right there when she's like practicing and doing things, she freaks out. So we get a little bit of like um, anxiety attacks, you know, at a young age because of this traumatic thing. So Brittany has a history of like traumatic experiences in her family, okay? Like most people do, but it's noted, it's, it's intentionally told to us, okay? So moving right into Brittany's child star era, 
okay? So, this is when Brittany is doing everything. She is dancing, she's singing, she loves both. It's like her escape from all of the crazy things going on at home. So, she's dancing, she's singing, she's doing gymnastics, and she's doing all these dance competitions, and she's winning. She's doing really well. So, her mom's like, you know what? Let's start looking for some real gigs. So, she looks, and she finds the Mickey Mouse Club audition. They drive a bunch of hours, they go, they go to audition. She doesn't get the part. It's because she's eight years old, and they're literally not accepting anybody under 10. So, they were like, you know, come back when you have more experience. We're sorry, whatever. So, after that, she kind of ends up in New York doing theater stuff. She's really working a lot, a lot for a 10-year-old, okay? Like, all day, every day. She finds out that the holidays are coming up, and she's supposed to be working. And she's like, I don't want to do this. Like, okay? Part of her wants to be a star, and part of her wants to just, like, be normal. So, she tells her mom, she's like, yeah, no, I want to, like, go home for Christmas. So, she quits the New York theater stuff, goes home, lives her life normally, and then, guess what comes back around? Mickey Mouse Club auditions, and your girl is 10 years old now. So, she goes to the auditions, obviously gets the part, okay? So, now she is in dressing rooms, break rooms with some well-known people that you know as Ryan Gosling, Christina Aguilera, and Justin Timberlake, which Justin Timberlake, we all know, comes back <laughs> into Britney's life later on. So, let's just keep that in our noggins for a minute, okay? So, she's doing Mickey Mouse Club. She's having a blast. She's living her life. She's doing what she loves. And this is also around the time she gets her first kiss, okay? First kiss moment, super cute. At this point, she's really torn between being a star, making it big, or kind of just like living her life at home slower in Louisiana. Okay, so she's like, I don't know, I don't know, whatever, normal things. She decides, you know what, I kind of want to live normal teenage life, okay? So, she goes home to Louisiana for her teenage years, and that brings us to Britney Spears as a teenager, okay? She's, ha she's doing normal teenage stuff, okay, in Louisiana, having fun, whatever. Something I do want to note that I thought was a little weird is the fact that she was drinking with her mom at 13. I was like, oh, oh, a little weird, especially since your dad's an alcoholic. Kind of odd. Um, I, did, I thought that was kind of weird, but she was also smoking cigarettes with her friends, which is like, who wasn't doing that at that time at 13, right? Um, so, she refers to this friend as like a bad friend, the one who gave her her first cigarette. Well, she is hanging out with this bad friend, okay? And within the friend group, there's this 18-year-old boy who has a girlfriend who Brittany's crushing on, which, mind you, keep in mind, okay? Keep it in your noggin. This girl is 13 at this time, okay? She's crushing on an 18-year-old. Fine, you're allowed to have a crush, whatever. As long as this 18-year-old has no idea and doesn't pursue you, you can crush on someone who's a little older than you. It's kind of normal, whatever. I mean, at least it's normal for me. She goes to this bad friend's house for a sleepover. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, she's sleeping on the couch um, at the sleepover and she wakes up because she feels something on the couch. Looks over and who do we see sitting on the end of the couch? Mr. 18-year-old with a girlfriend. <laughs> what happens next? Oh, they make out. Jail. Immediately, jail. Okay. So, already Miss Brittany at 13 is making out with an 18 year old. Not her fault at all. I'm just saying this is a traumatic experience, an illegal traumatic experience. So, fast forward, okay? Brittany's 14. She's 14. She's a freshman in high school, okay? Remember that predator I just mentioned? Well, he has a best friend. His best friend's 17. She decides to date his best friend. So, she loses her virginity to the 17 year old boy slash man at 14 and she's skipping school. She's leaving at lunch, not coming back, hopping on the bus, then going home like nothing happened. Obviously, this only lasted for like two weeks until her mom found out, but this guy was bad news, okay? I mean, if you're 17 getting with a 14-year-old, you're bad news, okay? But she obviously didn't see that because no one does at 14, but she's skipping school. She's doing bad things, whatever. Also, it's good to note that Brian, her older brother, hated this guy. Valid, literally valid. Around 15, so like a year later, she decides, you know what? I actually don't want to be here anymore, and I do want to be a star, so it's time to go be a star. And she records her demo, she sends it around, ends up getting a record deal with Clive Records. I think I'm saying that right. I could be saying it wrong, but she gets a record deal, and it's her first one, okay? It's important to note that at this time, Britney's mom was a second grade teacher and just had 
uh, Jamie Lynn, which is her little sister. Pretty sure Jamie Lynn. So just had Britney's little sister. So she couldn't like go everywhere with Britney for this like brand deal stuff or this brand deal, this record label stuff. So she sends a family friend named Felicia. Okay. We love Felicia. Um, she is basically Britney's guardian through all of this. That's just important to know her name. After this, she is constantly recording. She's in the booth. She's never taking breaks. She's recording in New Jersey and Sweden. She's getting all her stuff done. Okay, she is working. She's a working girl. She filmed the Baby One More Time music video, which she actually said was her most passionate time in her career was filming that music video, which I agree. 10 out of 10, beautiful music video. Um, she went on a mall tour, which she claimed, you know what? Not the biggest fan of mall tours, but you know, when your record label tells you this is what you got to do, no one knows me, I got to get out there, got to put my name out there, that's what she did. So, she did it very briefly because at 16, Baby One More Time hit stores, okay, she became the first woman with a debut number one single and album, single and album at the same time, okay? Amazing. Setting records, a queen. So, she obviously did a bunch of media tours, press because of this, and she started touring with NSYNC, do you see where this is going? <laughs> Who's in in sync? Take a look at the self and it put it on it. There's no place they gotta go. Mirrors and then in the staring back at me. See, I don't know all the words, but I do know all of Britney's songs. So what does that say about you, Justin? She was coined the princess of pop. Validly. Valid. She was. And while she's touring with NSYNC, she goes, you know what? I'm in love with Justin Timberlake, which her and literally everybody else during that time, but you know, um, keep in mind, they had known each other when they were 10 working at a Mickey Mouse Club show, okay? Keep in mind, they knew each other. So, it's like, they're kind of like childhood friends in a way, I guess. So, this is also around the time she started noticing that hanging around Justin, she was like, mm, he gets a different interview questions than I do. Uh, weird. Uh, why am I being asked about my breast size and he's not? and whether my hymen is intact. Uh, okay. Weird. So, she starts to notice these things. She starts to notice that while she's going to her performances, she realizes there's more and more older men in her audience. So, she's like, mm, don't like that. That's weird. Um, she was kind of being labeled as too sexy and bad for the kids because of what she wore. And in an MTV interview, she basically responded by saying, you know what? Not everyone's gonna like me. I just dance. I sing. I do what I like not everyone's gonna like me, okay? Literally the chillest response ever. And she got years of backlash for this because that response apparently wasn't good enough, which shocker, shocker, okay, of course. So she also makes note that this is when she started taking Prozac, okay? Oh, uh, it's never mentioned again. She just says it in the sentence and is like, you know what, let's move on. After Oops, I Did It Again came out, she finally had enough money to get her dad out of his debt and build her mom a house, which literally queen, um, I wouldn't if he were my father and he treated me the way he did growing up. I'd be like, <laughs> sit in your debt. Sit in it. How does that feel? How does that feel? I'm over here making money. You're over here in debt. That's what I would do if my father treated me the way he treats her. So, but that's just me. You know, Brit this just shows how pure Britney's heart is. Okay. Now we enter our Justin Timberlake era. Okay. Not my favorite era um, very sad era. So, let's just jump right into it. She was 19 doing her Dream Within a Dream tour, her fourth tour, by the way, um, and she was loving it, you know, she was living with Justin Timberlake, they were cute, she was in love. Honestly, the way she talks about Justin Timberlake in this book is, like, so cute. She was, like, in love with this guy, okay, like, in love, okay, and the way he treated her in the beginning kind of made it seem like he was in love with her, too, you know, this is where we get the iconic denim on denim outfit. And Brittany actually said that she, like, made a joke that they should do that. And then Justin was like, you want to do that? Let's do it. And he, like, totally made it happen. Cute moment, right? You're like, oh, cute. So adorable. They love each other. But then he does what every man has the tendency to do when they're in a loving relationship. And that is cheat on her. Mm-hmm. Not once. Not twice. Multiple times six or seven times, probably more. Yeah. So, yeah. He was hooking up with groupies. He was hooking up with dancers. He was basically a slut. He was. And, um, you know, I'm actually not surprised, which is very sad, but 
and I feel really bad for Brittany because the way she talks about him, she was obviously like head over heels in love with this boy. She kind of heard rumblings, okay, that he was sleeping around, you know, saw pictures, heard people talking about it. People were, the girls were literally telling her. She was like, you know, let me just kind of ignore it a little bit. I really love him. I'm just going to ignore it. And then one day she couldn't ignore it. And she was like, you know what? I'm going to get back at him. I'm going to cheat on him too, which valid. Love girls wrongs, support girls wrongs. Now, the funny part is Brittany's version of like cheating. She goes to a bar and she makes out with someone. Then she instantly admits to Justin that she did it because she's like feels guilty. She tried. Honestly, she should have gone all the way, but she didn't. <laughs> she, you know, she tried. I guess it's still considered cheating, but compared to what he's doing, it's, like, not even on the same level. Whatever. So, she admits it to him. He's pissed. They fight. They eventually get over it. They're like, you know what? Let's just, whatever. Let's just get over it. And then, Brittany becomes pregnant. She's excited. She understands that they're young, but she's always wanted a family, and she's like, you know what? God's plan, basically. She's like, I guess it's just gonna happen early, but I, I really do want this baby with you. She tells Justin, and Justin says no, he's not happy with it, and he's like, you know what, we're way too young, I don't want to be a father, so Brittany is stuck with this, she's faced with this decision, um, and she thinks, you know, I don't want to push him into something that he doesn't want to do, I don't want to lose this relationship, so she decides to, so she decides to terminate the pregnancy, which the sad part about this part, there's a lot of sad parts about this part, but, uh, oh my god, I'm tearing up, I literally, this is like the only part I like really cried, um, she just, you really need to go read it. I'm not going to give you all the details. You need to go read it, uh, the way she talks about it. But she did say that if she was alone, if she had made that decision alone and Justin wasn't with her, she would have kept the baby. And the only reason she didn't was because of Justin. Um, and she wanted that baby. So the things you do for love, I guess. Um, and you know, Justin was very adamant on no one finding out. And Brittany was like, you know what, you're right, let's keep it a secret. So she doesn't go to the hospital. She takes a couple pills at home and she's told she'll feel some discomfort, but it shouldn't be too bad. And she's sitting on the bathroom floor in so much pain. She literally said the only thing she can remember from it is how much pain she was in. Um, she didn't even remember how it ended. She just remember how much pain she was in. And she was begging, um, hoping, like wishing, praying. Pr I think she uses the word praying a lot, actually. Praying to go to the doctor and instead justin does the next best thing which is sit on the bathroom floor with his guitar and sing to her how thoughtful shortly after this they break up are we surprised nope men do this he cheats on her basically gives her no option kind of makes her feel guilty she goes through with an abortion and then he breaks up with her and you want to hear the, the 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 you know the, the sherry on top he does it over text so she's over here dancing her little tushy off. She gets a text and she's like, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So he broke up with her over text. Are we surprised? No, it's just in fucking Timberlake. Okay. She was obviously devastated. We're in our heartbreak era. Okay. So meanwhile, in Louisiana, cause she decides, you know what? I'm going to go home for a bit. I'm fucking done. I need a break. So she goes to Louisiana. Meanwhile, in Louisiana, okay. Her mom divorced her dad. She's in a deep depression, and she comes to find out that her little sister is basically, her words, a total bleep. Love that she used those words in this book. Mind you, not only is she mourning the loss of her boyfriend, the love of her life, as she thought, but she's also mourning the loss of his family because they were kind of like a surrogate family for her. She went to all the holidays and things like that at their house, you know, with them, and she was mourning the loss of, like, the family she wanted and obviously the person she loved, but that's also important to keep in mind, so it made it, like, extra devastating for her. So, anyways, back to Louisiana, okay? Yeah, so she finds out that her little sister is a total bitch, her literal words in the book. Um, she's ungrateful, she's rude, and it really it felt like a betrayal to Brittany, because she was like, girl, I literally set you up. She, Brittany, grew up with, like, nothing, okay? They had, like, no money, they had no nothing. She grew up with her parents arguing all the time. She grew up with all that trauma, all that stuff, okay? And then she buys a house for her mom. She gets her dad out of debt. They divorce. And and this kid's just like, mm, more, more, more. Why'd you buy us a house? Why'd you buy us a house? <sighs> the way? No, 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 no. 
the way I would have scolded that child. She said while she was there visiting her mom, she just saw how her sister was talking to her mother in the most disrespectful way ever, especially while she's going through this, like, depression from being in a divorce with her alcoholic husband. Okay, let's not forget that. And this little bratty ass kid. So she's pissed, which valid, I would be too. But yeah, anyway, so that happens. And then she's like, you know what? Okay, it's time to come back. It's time to get back out there. It's time to start going to events again. You know, I got to get back in the scene. So she goes to this like Donatella party thing. And then she hears rumblings that Justin Timberlake's new song came out or they're talking about it or he played it or something. And it's called Don't Go Horrible Woman. (laughs) Excuse me? horrible women (laughs) hmm so she's like that's suspicious wonder if that's about me probably you know and then it's kind of confirmed when he releases cry me a river cry me a river the music video where he portrays someone who's supposed to be basically britney um breaking up with him cheating on him breaking up with him or whatever basically it gave the impression that britney cheated on him broke his heart blah 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 he was the victim like you know um, failing to mention the multiple times that he cheated on her, but, you know, who's counting? I am. I'm counting. I'm always counting. I'm coming for you, Justin Timberlake. But we all have, we also have to keep in mind that the era that Cry Me River came out was also the era of the bleep music that was coming out. Um, Eminem's song, I think it was called Kim, was coming out. Like, anything aggressive towards, like, a girl who wronged you was, like, the hot thing at the time. So, Justin basically used Britney for that even though that's literally not what happened but whatever whatever um yeah I you know what reading this I was like girl I would have lost my shit after that and she doesn't really like lose her shit until way later and there's like so many valid reasons for it but I'm just like I would have lost it so much sooner props to you so so because of this everybody was hating on her And when I say everybody, I mean literally everybody. She would go to, like, the store with her sister, and they were just booing. Everybody was booing because they were all like, you cheated on Justin, nah, nah, nah. And it's like, okay, (laughs) do we not remember when Justin was whoring it out for everybody and no one was saying a goddamn thing? Where was the energy? Where was it? It was non-existent, non-existent. Now, if this happened in 2023, I would, like, hope that the public would be like, you know what, uh, no, Justin's a bad guy, but... I don't know. I feel like it'd probably be the same. So, this is happening. She's getting, like, a bunch of shit. Whatever. People are booing her. (sighs) So, her managers and her team, they're not mad that Justin is slandering her as a cheater. You know what they're mad about? They're mad that he exposed her for being sexually active. Yeah, I'll give you a second to let that sink in. That's what they were mad about. Which, Brittany was like, why? She was like, huh? Why? Because they had given this portrayal that she's, like, just, like, this girl next door, like, virgin, saving herself, but, like, sexy, but has her hymen kind of vibe. And she was, like, meanwhile, she's, like, I'm having sex at 14. So, (laughs) far from a virgin. That's basically what she's trying to say. And they're just, like, oh, my God, this ruins your reputation. You don't look innocent anymore. Da, 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 da. And she's, like, okay, I think we're worrying about the wrong things, but, like, whatever. So, at this point, she's, like, okay, you know what? So much shit just keeps happening to me. She is a firm believer in karma. So, she starts to think that she's, like, done stuff to deserve it, which, queen, (laughs) no. And never think that again. Thank you very much. I think she's grown enough to know this now, but at the time, she was, like, I'm just receiving karma for things I've done that, like, I can't even recall that I've done, but it's my karma. I'm like, "Mm -hmm, no. Mm -mm." But, like, okay. And then there's, like, this, there's, like, this brief moment, um, after this where Brittany finds God. (laughs) Love you. If that helps you, great. Personally, I have not found God, but maybe one day. Um, she's going on a road trip with a friend, and she's like, do you feel that? Oh my god and she like feels this higher power and then she just gets this like overwhelming sense of you know what everything's gonna work out why am i even worrying about it whatever it's all gonna work out and you know what love that for her wish i had that so after britney's finding god era she goes you know what it's time to get back out there okay justin's dating he's sleeping with literally everybody really and you know what? i think it's time i think it's time for me to start dating so she has a brief little fling which she i'm pretty sure this is the one she described as 
just sex, okay? Colin Farrell. Don't know who that guy is. Anyway, brief little thing. Um, and this is also the moment where she kind of, she starts to open up about her social anxiety and she describes how she used to go to events and parties and be like, I'm going to go to the bathroom and then sneak out the front door, which is okay. Literally me. Literally. She's literally one for the people. I feel like I've never related to her more than that moment. Okay. (laughs) So she talks a bit about social anxiety and things like that. She struggles with a lot. At this time, she's living in New York. She's living in an apartment in New York and she's kind of like, you know, like, reclusing in the apartment, which, valid, okay? I would recluse too, especially after all the shit you went through with Justin. She talks about her time with Madonna and how Madonna mentored her, and when she had her featured on her song, um, Me Against the Music, she really got to work with Madonna and realized how, because Britney's a people pleaser. She's like, I know I'm a people pleaser. I don't want to be, and she watched Madonna just command this, like, respect and, like, you are on my time, you know? So, when something, I think, like, one of her outfits broke or something, and they were waiting for it to get fixed, and Brittany was, like, waiting and waiting and waiting, and she's like, wait. She realized she's allowed to take time to herself like that. She doesn't, you know, she's not on their time. They're on her time. She's the star. So, she starts to realize, you know what? That is how I want to live my life. So, she doesn't start doing things like that until later, but it is in the back of her mind at this time after seeing Madonna do it, um, you know, like, working with her. But she does want to mention, like, that's the first time she kind of realized, wait a minute, that's a possibility. So, that was kind of cool. So, this is around the same time Diane Sawyer, Sawyer, Diane Sawyer shows up at her house and is like, let's do an interview, blah, 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 live television. And she has no idea what the questions are. And she just instantly starts getting targeted with a bunch of questions about Justin Timberlake while the wounds are still fresh, okay? And she's vulnerable and she's, like, crying on national television and she's like, I was not ready for that, you know? She basically says, like, she wasn't ready for it. She was vulnerable. She needed more time to heal. And yet, she had to do that interview. So, that was kind of sad. Um, that, and that was really, like, the turning point for her. She's like, okay, <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. So, she's like, mm, I'm gonna go have a fun night with my best friend, Paris Hilton. I love that. <laughs> so, they go to Vegas, okay? They have a blast. And that's where we come into a 55-hour marriage, okay? They're having a blast. They're having fun. They get really drunk. She sleeps with a childhood friend. And she also decides, let's go to a little chapel and let's get married. And they do. And she wakes up the next morning. And all of a sudden, her parents are there yelling at her. And she's like, what happened? Did I, like, kill someone or something? And they're like, you got married. Um, Here are the papers. Sign them. End this. You should not be married to this guy. And she's like, (laughs) chill, literally chill, like calm down. (laughs) She's literally like, why are they freaking out? Why did they fly here overnight? Um, And she's kind of confused, but she's like, whatever. So she signs the papers. She's like, I don't know why they're freaking out so bad. But then it kind of comes to her later that um, she is completely financially supporting both of them. So I think like the thought of her getting married to someone um, would fuck with their financials. So of course they were freaking out. But at the time she was like, can y'all just, like, fucking chill, please? <laughs> it was really funny reading that part. I was like, okay, Brittany, like, literally me. She's like, I just made a stupid, she's like, I got drunk and made a stupid mistake. People do it all the time. Literally. But anyways, um, so that was kind of, like, the first time she started noticing, like, huh, my parents are very, they don't care about me, but they care about my money, you know? Just in the back of her mind. She was like, hmm, interesting. Trigger warning, Kevin Federline, okay? So she goes back. She's back on tour. She's doing her thing, okay? She hurts her knee at one point that sucks. So, anyways, she, um, at one point, she's just, like, in the book, she's, like, Kevin Federline is holding me in a way that no one else has ever held me. And she goes on for a couple chapters about how he just holds her, and he just wants someone to hold her, and he did. So, he holds her. That's all you really need to know about him. No, I'm (laughs) I'm kidding. So, yeah, he holds her. Great. Meanwhile, while he's holding her and being this amazing guy who holds her, um, he has a pregnant ex-wife, who already has a baby. So, he has a baby and a, with that ex-wife who's also pregnant. And she doesn't know about this. She hears about it, confronts him, and he's like, oh, yeah, I see him once a month. All nonchalant. She's like, oh, okay, weird. Okay, I still love you. You still hold me. Let's keep going, basically. Personally, that would be first red flag in my opinion. Why did he not bring it up? Like, why did you have to bring it up to him? But it's not my relationship. 
not my circus, not my monkeys. Moving on. That spring of 2004, she goes back on tour and she's like, Kevin, come with me. And he does. And then she actually hated that tour. She used to literally pray every night that she would break a limb so she wouldn't have to finish it. And maybe God is real because she broke something and she didn't have to finish it. So <laughs> maybe I should start praying. Um, she asks Kevin to marry her. He says no. And then he proposes to her. Mm, another red flag, in my opinion. At this point, her little sister landed the job on Zoe 101. Good for you. I was watching it, okay? I'm gonna act all, like, high and mighty, but I was definitely watching Zoe 101. Kevin and her got married in the fall, and she started sh going on breaks. She was like, you know what? I want to enjoy married life. I want to enjoy my life a bit. I'm taking a break. So, that's exactly what she did. And then, during this break, we enter our pregnancy era, okay? Pregnancy era, yay! Brittany literally wanted kids. Here we are having kids. So, she's pregnant. She says she was really mean during her pregnancy. Valid. I'm mean all the time. I don't need to be pregnant to be mean. I'm just mean. So, she... I, it's something funny I want to mention about this little part about her being pregnant talking about being pregnant her pregnancy era um she briefly takes a few seconds to mention the fact that she ambushed Alexis Nicholas which is the kind of like co-star on Zoe 101 if you guys haven't heard okay she Brittany's little sister on Zoe 101 was like I'm, I'm gonna give you the brief description of this was literally bullying the f bullying the shit out of Alexis I think her name is alexa nicholas okay the girl who's supposed to be her best friend on the show was bullying her and having all the other girls bullying her come to find out that's not what was, or she was bullying her and having all the other girls bully her well that's not what she told britney she was like this girl's bullying me this girl's spreading rumors about me and then britney fully pregnant fully pissed off shows up corners her in a trailer and is like stop spreading rumors about my sister Ah, scaring the living hell out of this teenager, who she then later finds out was completely innocent. She's already apologized to her, so she, like, just briefly mentions it in the book, which, valid. She, it's literally done and over with. She already apologized publicly and to her personally, so. But I just thought it was really funny the way she described it. She was like, I was pregnant, I was pissed off, you know, I just yelled at this teenager and then realized I was wrong. So, anyways, that happened. She has her first baby, Sean Preston, born, okay, and then boom. Three months later, she's pregnant again. Literally cannot catch a break. Literally pregnant for, what's nine plus nine? Mm, a lot of months. That's what it is. More than a year. Paparazzi are everywhere, obviously. They are on her. On her, they want pictures of the babies. They want, you know, all over. And as a new mom, you're already kind of freaking out, okay? From what I've heard. Never been a mother, but I've heard it's scary. As a new mom, you're freaking out. You're trying to keep your child safe. You've got 20 dudes with a bunch of cameras flashing and screaming at you everywhere you go. <laughs> it's stressful stressful for her now you might be thinking where's her husband can't he help like run interference while she's has these babies or i'm sorry while she's pregnant and literally with like a, a fresh child too like can he not run interference for her oh here's the answer to your question he's busy enter number one worst dad of the year award goes to kevin Federline. he's working on music he's recording in the studio he just doesn't have time to be a dad. Sorry. Sorry. You thought I wanted to be a dad? <laughs> what? No. I want to be a rapper. <laughs> Sorry. It's so stupid. <laughs> so, he's in the studio. He's recording. Brittany's at home with the kids. At this point, Brittany's like, you know what? I think my marriage is ending. It's kind of weird. Why does my husband want nothing to do with me or my kids? Odd. She tried to go visit him on the set and the security guards would literally be like, he doesn't want to speak to you. You can't come in. Meanwhile, oh, by the way, these security guards used to be her security guards, so he's basically bumming off of her. That's all. I uh, just want to let you know. Um, my opinion, he was definitely sleeping around and doing some shady ass ships behind closed doors that he didn't want her to know about. Um, but I didn't really do much, much deep research into that. I just read her book and was like, tell me about it. You know what I mean? I didn't really go into the depth because, frankly, I don't care about Kevin Federline. I just don't care. So she basically said that the money and the fame ruined him valid definitely probably did personally i think he was ruined before that but mm, made him a worse person made him like insufferable to be around she has her second boy in 2006 Jaden james super cute name at this point she's very anxious she has two baby boys she's got vultures around her constantly trying to get pictures of her boys okay making it unsafe i couldn't even imagine she never saw kevin he was always out doing things blah 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 being absent meanwhile he's telling press i love being a father mm second man to lie to her 
Okay. In light of the public, so. Literally cannot escape it. So when she married him, she was in love with him. But now we're at the stage where her lawyer's like, girl, if you don't file for divorce, he will. You want to be the one to file first. So she goes, okay, I'm listening. Files for divorce. And both sides, of course, want full custody, which is weird considering that he literally has nothing to do with these kids. So she's like, okay, why would he personally, why would he want full custody? He's doing his own thing. I think literally he just wanted to fight with her in court. I don't even think he really cared about the kid, but whatever. Kids. Kids. So meanwhile, she goes to this music award thing. She sits. Jimmy Kimmel does this like really like weird, violent skit about Kevin and she had no idea it was going to happen. Um, and it really took her by surprise and she was not in support of it. It made her look like manipulative and that she was like trying to gain the public's vote in a way and she was basically just like i wasn't manipulative i was literally stupid like no one i had no idea you know what i mean so that was her words not mine she literally called herself stupid after the breakup with justin and the divorce with kevin she was like i'm never trusting anybody ever again which is literally valid so moving on we're now in our party era not really because it wasn't really an era it was like one party so she goes out with paris hilton literally loves paris hilton she speaks very highly of her bestie amazing very sweet person she gets really junk she's not an alcoholic she's just having fun didn't know that was a crime can mothers not have fun meanwhile her kids are literally safe being watched by her mother so she comes home oh it's also important to note that the media was like she's an alcoholic and britney was like no i'm not my drug of choice is adderall so that's mentioned. Um, she comes home. She is drunk. Valid. Had a fun night. Um, took a break from being a mother for a second. And her mom is like, oh my god, I can't believe you. You're losing it. it tears into her. No grace whatsoever for this woman. No grace. And um, yeah. And that leads us into our bald head Britney era. So let's get into it. She was like, girl, I have postpartum depression, which she does. And she's like, I feel like I have no freedom. I feel like I have no safety. Um, Kevin ends up taking the boys and not giving them back to her, not letting her see them for weeks. So she's like, you know what? Mm, don't like that. I couldn't imagine having someone who wanted nothing to do with my kids suddenly having full custody of my kids. Weird. Weird. Okay. So then something else happens. Her aunt dies um, after battling, I think it was ovarian cancer. She dies and this Brittany takes it hard. So not, not only is she grieving the loss of her aunt, she's also grieving the loss of her two children that her husband is just like holding hostage. So in February, she decides, I'm going to go get my boys. Uh, Jaden's five months old and Sean is 17 months old. Just so you know, the press is standing outside Kevin's. They're watching all this happen. She's trying to get in. Kevin's like, no, you can't see them. No. She is just, the, the press is just standing there, okay, staring at her. She just felt like she was back in the corner. She had no control. She decides, you know what? I, You want a show, bitch? I'm going to give you a show. So she walks across the street, goes to a hair salon, has all of her hair shaved off. Valid. Now, she basically said after this happened, no one talked to her. Her mom was scared of her, which... Like, honestly, success in my eyes. If her mom's scared of her, that's a success. Shaving her head was, like, her way of saying fuck you to the whole world. And I wanted to read this quote from her book that I really thought, like, just put it all in a nice little bow of why she shaved her head. Because I remember the media being like, oh my god, Britney's lost it. She's gone crazy. So, listen to this. I've been the good girl for years. I smiled politely while TV show hosts leered at my breasts. While American parents said I was destroying their children by wearing a crop top while executives patted my hand condescendingly and second-guessed my career choices even though I'd sold millions of records, while my family acted like I was evil. And I was tired of it. And there was nothing more to say about her bald head era. But let's get on to the umbrella incident. You all know the umbrella incident. Let's, let's understand what happened. So, after weeks without her children, she's feeling lost, sad, distraught, valid feelings for the situation, and she moves to this cottage in Beverly Hills, a little, little while after shaving her head, her friend's like, you know what? Let's go, you know, see Kevin. Let's see your kids. On the way there, they stop at a gas station. Cameras find them. Cameras follow them. Paparazzi are everywhere. And she goes up to Kevin's house, you know, to get to see the kids. Again, Kevin's like, literally go away. You're not seeing them. Okay, King. Weird. So she drives away. Her and her friend drive off and they pull over just to try and talk about like 
what are we going to do now, you know? Like, what's the next step? And um, the paparazzi swarm the car. They're, like, everywhere. And there's this one particular paparazzi person is standing by the window where Brittany's sitting. And he's just asking over and over, like, how does it feel to not have your kids? How does it feel to not be able to see your kids? Blah, blah, blah. And he's, like, evilly, like, smirking. Like, he's waiting for her to snap and get the photo. You know, the money shot, as he then says in the rest of the chapter. Um, And so, she snaps. She grabs an umbrella. And she leaves. She gets out of the car. She is never going to hit him. She says she's never going to hit him. She goes to his car, beats the living shit out of his car with an umbrella, and then gets back in her car. That's literally all what happened. And honestly, I would have done a lot worse. So, I can only imagine, you know, why everybody's freaking out because I would have done a lot worse. But he was like, yeah, it was kind of messed up of me, but I got the money shot that night. Like, okay, how do you sleep at night? This obviously was a super big embarrassment. So, so now we're in the, you're a disgrace moment. Um, she goes to Brian's apartment in LA Her mom's there, wouldn't even look at her because she's bald. And they were like, you know what, if you go to rehab, you could get your kids back. And she's like, okay, I'll do it. So she decides she goes to rehab. This is when her dad is like, you are a disgrace. She says it to her face, which is kind of funny coming from an alcoholic who abused his children. It's a little funny. Uh, I mean, it's not funny at all, but it's like, huh, who's the disgrace here? Really? Who? Because I only see one in the room. Anyway, that obviously was a big ouchie, but she gets out of rehab. She gets 50-50 custody. Yay! Okay, at least she's got them now. At least she's not banging on Kevin's door being like, give me my children. So, she's got 50-50. Um, it's 2007. Boom. Blackout comes out. Yay! Okay, so fast forward a little bit. Um, she is with Jaden and, um, Kevin's security guard. You guys probably already know about this part too, but Kevin's security guard shows up to pick up Jaden. It's Kevin's time to have the kids. Um, she panics, starts thinking, what if this is the last time I see my children? What if Kevin holds them again, doesn't let me see them? Which, valid, based on the history, okay? Um, she freaks out, takes Jade and goes in the bathroom, locks the door. SWAT is called, um, the door is broken down. She is put on a 72-hour hold, which they don't even keep her for 72 hours because she was mentally fine. She just had a little bit of a panic. And, um, they release her and she loses 50-50 custody of her kids. Um, at this point, obviously, she's very upset. Starts taking a bunch of Adderall. She's, um, hospitalized again. Honestly, I would too, going through all the shit she's going through. So, she also, at this time, found out about her sister's 16-year, her 16-year-old sister's, um, teen pregnancy. You wanna know how she finds out? Tabloids. Family didn't even tell her. They were very keeping it under wraps especially within the family. They were like, not even every family member gets to know. We're keeping it a secret. So, she finds out via the tabloids, which that's kind of like a little burn considering she funds all of their lives. Odd. You'd think that you would tell the person who's going to have to pay for the diapers that you're pregnant, but okay, whatever. Now, we're in the photographer era, okay? We are dating a photographer, cute moment. Um, later we find out that he was married the entire time and she was essentially his mistress, but we're ignoring that for now. Brittany's in her, dating a photographer, rebelling, having fun, driving recklessly, going to Mexico era. So, she's in Mexico with the photographer. She gets a call from her mom and her mom's like, hey, we need to talk. Let's meet at the beach house. And she's like, why? And she's like, we just, we need to. And she's like, okay, kind of weird, but okay. She brings the photographer with her because she's like, weird vibes. They're driving up to the house, the beach house, with the photographer. And he's like, "Mm, is it just me or the vibes weird? (laughs) And she's like, it is kind of weird here. And then they look up and they see a fucking helicopter circling the beach house. And come to find out, it was a setup. Uh, She gets taken, strapped to a table. And enter our conservatorship era. But before we jump into the conservatorship era, I do need to note that um, there is a mommy memoir era where her mom basically does an entire memoir and basically uses Britney's life and Britney's little sister's life as like fuel for her memoir. Uh, Took Britney's lowest point in her life and was like, it's so hard being a mom to these crazy kids. Okay, weird. Um, book media was literally everywhere and it was all at Britney's expense and she's like, I cannot get away from it. It's everywhere. I would be pissed. Honestly, I wonder if you could sue. I don't know if you could, but she should have, if she could have. It's just so weird as a mother to be making money off one of the darkest times of your daughter's life, but like, 
as we're soon to find out, her mom sucks, okay? So, we're in our conservatorship era. I'm not going to talk too much about this era because for a whole year, our, like, free Britney era, all we talked about was the conservatorship, and I feel like there's, like, 20,000 documentaries about it. Um, and I watched a couple of them, and they're all very detailed. So, if you want, like, the detailed nitty-gritty law stuff, you're going to want to watch one of those after this video. I'm just going to be covering the details of the conservatorship that Britney shares in her book that aren't really, like, I'm not sure, but I don't think they're in the documentaries, you know? Like, just the little details that may have been left out in the court stuff. So, that's what I'm sharing. But if you want more details, go watch one of those. She had to stop seeing the photographer. Her dad basically runs her entire life. So, he was like, no, you're done seeing him. Also, fun fact, every person she dated got a full sexual history of her, had to submit a blood test and sign an NDA before they even went on a first date. Can you imagine doing that with everybody you've ever dated? Me either. So, basically, she was like, it was a very lonely life because obviously no one's going to date me if that's the things you have to do to date her. She was also unaware at this time that she didn't have to use the court-appointed lawyer. She could have got her own lawyer, lawyer, but everybody around her was like, you're not allowed to. And she didn't, which well, wasn't allowed to have a phone. So, like, how was she supposed to know these things? You know what I mean? Basically, she fought it and then she was like, you know what? I'm just going to play along, do my best, and then this will be over before I know it. I just have to show them that I'm capable and I don't need this and it'll be over with. This lasted for 13 years of her life. Unfortunately, that basically doing everything they wanted was not the was not going to get her out of it because that's not really why they were there. And she soon finds that out after doing everything they want and realizing she's never going to get out of it unless she tries to get out of it herself. So, um she played by the rules cuz she wanted to see her boys again. Her dad ended up becoming a multimillionaire with her money. Meanwhile, he was giving her 2000 dollars a month on an allowance check so during this time she's doing her vegas residency and she starts dating a tv producer named charlie ebersole okay um she says she loved him he worked out a lot and introduced her to these fun little energy supplements that basically helped her get through the day they're over-the-counter supplements gym bros are taking so how dangerous can they really be and she had an Adderall problems. Like, that's like, you know what I mean? It's prescription, you know? So, it's it's not a problem. She basically was like, I'm not abusing it. It's not prescription. I'm just using it to get through the day, to do all the stuff that they are wanting her to do. Dad finds out about the supplements. Boom. Month in rehab. And this is a common theme throughout this whole era. Lots of rehab every time she does something. Rehab, okay? So, her kids are seven and eight at this time, by the way, just so we're keeping track of that. So, anyway, she has to do this Vegas show she tells him, I don't want to do it. They go, too bad, go. So, she goes to this Vegas show. It's time for her to announce it. She gets up. She's, she rises on the platform on the stage. She's like, it's, it's Britney, you know? And then she just walks and keeps walking, gets in an SUV, drives away. She's like, mm, not doing it. Told you I wasn't going to and I'm not going to. So, what do you think happened next? They sent her to the ranch, as Dr. Phil would say. Um, Shortly after this, they went through her bag. They were like, you have energy supplements. You're going to rehab. Um, a $60,000 a month rehab. And there's no end date. We're just going to send you. And however well you decide to do, then you'll get out sooner. But the hard work's on you, you know. Usually, it'll give her like one month and then she's out. But they told her, I don't know how long you're going to be in there. It really just depends on how much work you're going to want to put in. Rude, but whatever. So, she goes. She was stuck. She couldn't leave. She was taken away from her kids. She was taken away from her dogs. And, you know, she goes into detail about being in the mental facility, which they say rehab, but it ends up being like a mental facility. Um, she goes into detail about her time there. I'm not going to touch on it. I think that it's very personal and I think that you should read that yourself. Uh, I'm not going to, I mean, imagine a mental facility and imagine being in it. There you go. There's Britney's experience. So, enter in the free Britney era, okay? I got to live through this era as a conscious being, adult thinking mind. A lot of the stuff in the beginning of her life happened while I was like one or two. So, I actually got to live through this part. Um, so, she gets back from her long, un involuntary grippy socks vacation and she realizes that everybody's acting, all her family members are acting like literally nothing happened. And she's like, huh, that's weird. That's when she starts to think, you know what? I'm going to manifest a way out of this conservatorship. And I'm not just saying manifest because I think it's funny. She literally says that. She's like, I'm going to manifest and pray for a way out of this conservatorship, which 
valid, I guess. I'm a manifesting girl. I can't even hate. I love manifesting. I manifest, I've manifested this and manifested my whole life. So she's like, I'm just going to manifest really hard to get out of this conservatorship. The princess of pop herself called it manifesting, not me. So she decides, you know what? People need to see me as a person. I'm going to start posting on social media. Enter the spinning and dancing outfit videos. We all were very much enjoying. I think it was like 2020, 2021. Um, love that for her okay so she's doing this she's having a blast with it also side note they like threw out some of her stuff like her journals full of like her early writing and things like that while she was in the mental facility they threw it out which is kind of rude and i think it also added to the fact that she was like okay i need to manifest a way out of this anyways june 2021 she calls 911 reports conservatorship abuse and she finds a new lawyer she basically gets freed of this conservatorship we freed Brittany. Okay, Brittany is free. Obviously, if you want more details on that, go watch the documentary about it, but she marries Sam um, Asgari. I'm probably saying that wrong, but she marries Sam, which in her book, it ends with like them being married, you know, living her life, but um, I just recently found out that as of August 2023, so August of this year, they're actually separated. So, unfortunately, they're separated, but according to the book, it ends with them being happy and her doing everything that she wasn't allowed to do um, while she was under that conservatorship. So she's free. She's having her fun life, fun time, hanging out with her kids, finding her spirituality, having a relationship with God, having a great time, really. And I'm proud of her. So um, yeah, that's literally it. That's the book beginning to end. Follow me on other socials if you want. Like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel um, if you want to see more from me. So bye.